Hi, I'm Dan Krinas from the Leader of Learning podcast, a proud member of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to right now. The opinions expressed are those of the individual hosts. Make sure to check out all the other great podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. And get ready, because the learning begins in three, two, one. Coming up on episode number 116 of the House of EdTech podcast, we're going to talk about how we can inspire critical thinking with EdTech. I'm going to help you gauge critical thinking in your classroom. And are you still collecting cell phones? Let's get started. Welcome to the House of EdTech podcast. I am your host, Chris Nessie. The House of EdTech explores how technology is changing the way teachers teach and the impact that technology is having in education. I discuss technology that is changing our classrooms and schools, and I share tools and tips that you can hear today and use tomorrow. You're going to hear the stories of teachers, leaders, and creators just like you. The purpose? Whether you use it or not, technology is changing the way you teach and how your students learn. Welcome back to the House of Ed Tech podcast. If this is your first time, thank you for making this podcast part of your anytime, anywhere professional development. Because as you know, listening to podcasts is a great way to learn or be entertained or any number of other things. So let's get down to business for this episode. First, a couple of announcements, some witty banter here at the top that I just want to share some news with you. I recently found out that I will be teaching a third class at Rutgers University this upcoming fall semester, and I'm really excited about this college course that I'll be teaching. The title is Self and Society in Virtual Contexts. Here's the description. Students explore what it means to have multiple and merging identities in an online community. How are interpersonal relationships and group interactions manifested in virtual environments? How is selfhood expressed? What is the impact on communication when gender, race, and other physical attributes are self-selected and represented digitally? What do human rights mean in a virtual society, and is citizenship changed with purely online interaction? This is going to be a very exciting course to teach in one that when my department chairperson reached out to me and asked me if I'd be interested in teaching this course, I jumped at the opportunity because it's a communication class in the School of Communication. It is based on technology. Instagram plays a large role in what happens in this course over the semester. So I'm really excited to have what are going to be some really dynamic and interesting conversations with my students this coming semester. And hopefully if all goes well, I'll be teaching this course going forward. I also just found out that I will be getting a student teacher to my classroom this year. This is now, I don't know if you've ever had a student teacher, but this will be my first and I am really excited and words literally cannot express how excited I am for this opportunity. I'm actually going to be going to cover this news uh, in way more detail on podcast PD. And that's the podcast I host with Stacey Lindis and AJ Bianco. And you can listen to that episode if you go to podcastpd.com slash 34. AJ is also going to have a student teacher this year, and we're talking about what that means to both of us and kind of what our expectations are and what that is going to kind of look like. So I'm really looking forward to this opportunity to really make a difference in the life of another educator and You know, I've never said that I am the greatest teacher on the face of the planet, but I certainly have my perspective and my point of view, and I have experience that I can share with a new educator, and it's certainly going to be a positive experience for both of us. One thing that I will share here is, while I'm looking forward to sharing my experiences and sharing advice with this individual, I'm also looking forward to learning from them. That is definitely something that's going to come up in future episodes 
on both this and Podcast PD. But again, you can check out that conversation over at podcastpd.com slash 34. This next uh, nugget here is actually some sad news. Now, it's sarcastically sad, so please, it's, it's nothing super sad. But Selly has shut down. Now, this is not brand new news. It's just new news to me. Selly was the first House of Ed Tech recommendation. I know. This, this does make me sad. Selly was a tool that was competitors with Remind, and I recommended and used Selly for many years. I, I got away from it in the last couple of years, but I initially used Selly because they they weren't remind i I'll, I'll be honest i i wasn't <laughs> i wasn't keen on remind's marketing back in 2013 2014 and selly just seemed to offer something that was just way simpler i i know remind is not that complicated but i just i i was attracted to selly it just it just really spoke to me and it, and it's gone and actually shut down back in february of 2018 and once I, I read about this, because I'd been debating how I wanted to maybe integrate that technology into my courses this year and just happened to, you know, look up Sally and went to their website and there it was gone. That now makes Remind <laughs> my official group message app of choice for educators, because once I saw that Sally was gone, I, I looked up to see, you know, what other options were out there in addition to Remind. And there's nothing that is free and harnesses a lot of the technology and makes it just super simple to use. So while I wasn't a fan of Remind years ago, I, I went back and my, my account was still there because I, I had used them a little bit uh, early on. And, you know, I'm going to be trying that out, or at least I have the account. I don't know if I'm going to integrate it, but I definitely have the account reestablished and we will see how that goes, you know. My first recommendation, EdTech is funny like that. <laughs> there you go. I was going to insert taps here, but I decided not to, not to do that. <laughs> uh, more positively, though, uh, I'd like to give a shout out to McGraw-Hill. McGraw-Hill recently published a post on Medium titled Resources for EdTech Coaches. And they closed out this post, which I will link to in the show notes. They closed out the post with a section about EdTech podcasts, and they shouted out two specific podcasts ted talks education and this one the house of ed tech that was super cool when they tagged me in the tweet and i went over to read and i was expecting it to be another list of you know here's you know 10 12 ed tech education podcasts but there were only two ted talks education and this one i i was floored uh, i will link to this post over at chrisnessy.com slash 116 and make sure you read the whole post. I mean, I'm down at the bottom, but read the whole post and it is solid and it made me smile. So there you go. There are also, speaking of education podcasts, there are two new podcasts on our very own education podcast network. The first is called Reimagine Schools, and that is with and hosted by Dr. Greg Goins. He was formerly on the network with a podcast called Goin Digital, but that podcast pod faded, but now he is back and he is back with this brand new podcast. The second new podcast is called the instant relevance podcast. And that is co-hosted by Dennis Sheeran and Raymond Steinmetz. You may have heard Dennis before on this podcast, but Dennis is the author of the highly acclaimed education book, instant relevance. And now he has started a podcast to continue to talk about those same themes and you know, how we can make it real in education and get things instantly relevant <laughs> for our students when we are teaching. So that's super exciting. Uh, there will also be, I can tease it here now, there will be another new podcast coming in September, not from me, but a new one that I will be producing in the world of education. So make sure you stay tuned and I will be able to provide more details about a brand new podcast on the Education Podcast Network and new to the education space and I'll talk more about that in episode 117. So let us move on to my EdTech 
thought. All right. So I was in SatChat recently, and it was related to education technology. Shout out to Kim Matina from the G Suite podcast, who was the moderator for the summer of SatChat. And something that came up in the conversation while I was participating. This ed tech thought is titled collecting cell phones and personal devices. I, I almost want to just simply say it's 2018. Are you still collecting cell phones and personal devices from your kids when they walk in the classroom door? I'm going to be honest. I sure hope you're not. I hope you have found a way and are finding new ways to peacefully integrate mobile devices into your instruction. Now, I know what you might say. My administration says, my superintendent, my district says, no cell phones in the classroom. Sure. In my classroom, there are no cell phones permitted. Dot, dot, dot. For texting and Snapchatting and being off task and, you know, shooting video and pictures and distracting other people. Of course, that's not what we want to be using those devices for. But taking them or collecting them, that is, that is a history lesson right there. That, that, that shouldn't be happening. I, I could understand. You know what? I, I couldn't understand it years ago because that's not how my mind works. I'm one who embraces technology. So hopefully you're not collecting devices and you're finding ways to promote effective technology use because does your principal or your supervisor take your cell phone away from you when you walk in the door of the school? No, there are expected norms and the way you should be working in the workplace and you could still have your cell phone. Make it real. Thank you, Dennis Sheeran. Make it real for your students. Show them and model for them. Don't take it away. Use it as a teachable moment. One strategy that I employed last year was I actually built, and I'm, I, I prototyped actually, a cell phone charging station for my classroom that could hold, I think it held maybe up to 10 phones, whether it was Android or you know, Apple devices, and it had the cables, and the quote-unquote rule in my classroom was, hey, the charger is there for you, but once it goes on the charger, it's there till the end of the block unless we actually need it. So that actually alone eliminated a lot of distractions because... Sometimes kids get distracted from the fact that, hey, I've only got, you know, 3% battery and I'm never going to make it through the rest of my day if this phone dies. So maybe consider adding a, a cell phone charger or just showing them the proper etiquette and, you know, encourage and promote the use of the phones in your classroom, you know, and use their powers and the technology for good. And if they get off task, I'm sure there's been a time where you've been off task with your phone and nobody took it away from you. So... Why are we doing that to kids? And that's my EdTech thought. Changing things up here a little bit in this episode, we're going to get right into the featured content. So the title of this episode is Inspire Critical Thinking with EdTech. So let's go. When you implement technology in your classroom, your goal should be to push students to go beyond fact memorization and embrace an actual conceptual understanding of the material and the content that you're teaching. Now, in my high school social studies classroom, I, I think, I try, I believe I model this. During the 2017-2018 school year, I administered zero tests. Now, when I say test, I'm referring to multiple choice, true, false, and assessments with those types of questions. There was obviously assessment in my classroom for my students so I could measure their learning. There was one DBQ or document-based questioning that took place each marking period. And actually one of those was modified and designed to be a VBQ. So video-based questioning. And that relied on videos that students would watch, analyze, and write about. From day one in my classroom, I committed to no homework in my classroom. 
not because I'm friendly with Matt Miller of Ditch That Textbook and Ditch That Homework fame, but because I decided homework doesn't fit in with the experience I want my students to have. In our classroom, we have access to laptops and the world's knowledge, both past and present, and it's all at our fingertips. Being armed with technology is one piece to promoting critical thinking. The other piece, and I may be oversimplifying this, but the other piece is simply forcing students to have to think critically, put them in situations and design assignments where they have to think critically. I chose to root a majority of the learning in a project-based model. So what did that look like? I fit that into social studies by designing the class to utilize what are known as the 10 themes of social studies. Now, if you're not a social studies teacher, bear with me. This will circle around. So rather than studying history by following the timeline, we examined multiple periods of history at the same time. But we looked at these broader themes like economics, government, self, geography, And students collaborated in a variety of group settings to complete at least one project per month. So with the theme lasting four to five weeks, they would be working on a project for that period of time. Some of these units of study, I'll call them, involved multiple projects that built on each other. And then over the course of the entire year, we were building a lot of these soft skills like communication, collaboration, creation, and critical thinking. Day one of the school year involved us all talking about what is a growth mindset and how we as people and citizens can and need to develop this in order to achieve success in the world that we live in. And periodically throughout the year, we would remind each other because there were times where the students would question me And based on my initial reaction, they would call me out and remind me that I, even as the teacher, Mr. Nessie, remember growth mindset. So we definitely took on an each one, teach one kind of feel. But here are three specific strategies that I've used to promote critical thinking in my classroom that you can definitely adapt to your classroom. Number one, seeing others work. Collaborative discussions and cooperative problem solving are so easy with technology. Super easy, silly easy. Students collaborated on assignments and they were encouraged to speak with their peers when they had questions and were also encouraged to help the person next to them rather than always looking to take from those around them. Thank you, Simon Sinek. So putting them in a collaborative frame of mind gets them also in the frame of mind, to help those around them, where they have to work together, where there were times myself and my in-class support teacher, we could literally sit back or, or stand off to the side, and the class would operate on its own. Sure, there are little distractions here and there, but that happens with adults. It's going to happen with kids and students. Number two, class debates. In-class debates are an excellent critical thinking exercise that don't have to be limited to social studies. Now, you might be concerned that they could take out a huge chunk of class time and that they will only involve a few students. Well, with a little technology, something like Flipgrid or Padlet can get every student involved in a discussion by requiring them to post on a message board like Padlet or record a short video and post it to Flipgrid. The process is way more efficient, and students can respond to one another's arguments while defending their own points, which is a critical thinking skill. And because you're moving and using technology and moving it online, it can be done on their own schedule. Now, were there times where I asked them to do something at home? Yes, but it was not predefined as, yes, boys and girls, here is your homework for tonight. That wasn't the case. Not even close. It was more all right, you didn't finish it, let's continue the conversation. And the kids bought in because it wasn't, 
go home, read a section, answer questions. That, that just wouldn't fly. And number three, polling the class. You know the struggle of asking a question to the class and hearing nothing but silence, right? Anyone know what this is, class? Anyone? Anyone? Anyone seen this before? <laughs> Consider polling your students directly. While everybody has to answer, nobody has to take center stage. Use the results from tools like Poll Everywhere or Nearpod or a simple Google form, and that can help you determine if a lesson or a concept has been mastered. Obviously, something like Poll Everywhere can be integrated into Google Slides. Nearpod, you can ask all sorts of questions right within the whole of the lesson. And Google Forms can be used to create exit tickets. You can post it into Google Classroom. There's so many ways that you can integrate at least three simple technologies. And that's going to help you assess their learning and understanding. And you can use it as a way to give your students the opportunity to ask more questions. And when they have to think about what they don't know, that's going to help them learn. And it also works brilliantly to help keep your students on task. Now, how are you encouraging your students to think critically in your classroom? How does technology support your goals? I've shared a little bit here, again, the importance of collaboration, debating, and simply polling and asking questions. But I want to hear from you. I'd love for you to share what you're doing to help your students think more critically and how you're using technology to do that. So why don't you head over to chrisnessy.com slash 116, that's the show notes for this episode, and leave a comment or go out on social media. Let's share the ideas of how we're actually promoting and instilling these critical thinking skills in our students. And now it's time for this episode's House of EdTech recommendation, which plays right into what we just talked about. And today I'd like to recommend Socrative. Socrative is an interactive app that can be used to poll your students, create quizzes on the fly, and even create formative assessments. You simply create a quiz or question using the teacher dashboard in Socrative. Then the students log in and select or type in the correct answer. And you can take the answers and use them to engage your students in more discussion and conversation about what they've learned or whether or not they're effectively applying actual critical thinking skills. The resulting discussion can result in a great exchange of ideas and further analysis. Now you can go over to Socrative and you can use it for free, or they also have paid plans. But you can go over to Socrative.com to learn more, and that's S-O-C-R-A-T-I-V-E dot com. And that's my House of EdTech recommendation. And here's the part of the show that so many of you have come to expect and love. Here is the House of EdTech VIP. Congratulations to Melanie Holroyd. Melanie is a sixth grade teacher and technology coach from Long Island. She's a certified Google educator who's passionate about her family, education technology, her pit bull, and of course, like most of us, peanut butter. She's on Twitter, so make sure you go over and connect with Melanie. She is at when Irish eyes on Twitter, and that's W H E N. I-R-I-S-H-E-Y-S. Congratulations, Melanie. You are a House of Ed Tech VIP. Thanks again for checking out this episode of the House of Ed Tech podcast. I know you'll be able to increase the critical thinking opportunities in your classroom and find new ways for technology to help make that happen. Let's keep the conversation going. Head over to chrisnessy.com slash 116 and leave a comment on the show notes and share a strategy that you use with technology or without, because critical thinking is important with or without technology. Or you can go over to chrisnessy.com slash feedback and you can send a message. And if you'd like to share your strategy, hey, 
I'll put it here on an upcoming episode. Now, if you enjoy the podcast, do me one favor. Tell somebody else about the show. Word of mouth has really helped the House of Ed Tech grow in the last couple of years. So if you share it on social media, whether it's Twitter or Instagram, use at House of Ed Tech or hashtag House of Ed Tech and tag me as well. I'm at Mr. Nessie. And let's continue the conversation there. Word of mouth is the best way to share a podcast that you enjoy. The other thing that you can consider is becoming an awesome supporter. Many thanks to my awesome supporters, Eric Kurtz from ControlAltAchieve.com, Dan Gallagher from GallagherTech.EduBlogs.org, Peggy George from Classroom 2.0 Live, Jen Giffen from the Shooks and Gift Podcast, Mark Grindel, Jeff Herb from InstructionalTechTalk.com, Mike Messner, J.P. Prezavento from JPPrez.com, Scott Titmus, and Brent Warner from the EdTech.TV podcast. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for all of your support. And if you are interested, you can go over to chrisnessy.com slash awesome. And the awesome supporter program is powered by Patreon. So that would be awesome, too. The other thing I want to throw in here at the end is next episode, episode 117, we're going to be announcing the winner of our Urban Armor Gear iPhone X, iPhone 10 cell phone case giveaway. So if you haven't entered the contest, head over to chrisnessy.com slash feedback or send me an email feedback at chrisnessy.com and make the subject line iPhone X and that's going to enter you. But in the email, please share with me a strategy that you use at the start of the school year with technology. And I'll draw a winner and announce it in the next episode. On that next episode also, I'm going to be speaking with someone many of you have been requesting for a very long time. Miles will be here talking about education and technology from the perspective of first grader. Until next time, thanks for learning with me. And remember, using technology isn't difficult. Just give it a try. House of Ed Tech is a proud member of Voice Ed Radio. Voice Ed Radio, your voice is right here. For more great content, go to voiceed.ca. The House of Ed Tech is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. The Education Podcast Network, podcasts for educators, podcasts by educators. For more, go to edupodcastnetwork.com.